Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday night. We're back on our normal night, but this is the last, the last episode of this season of Minor League Fights and Insights. Uh, great to have you guys here. Um, yes, is it over? The minor league season is over. The draft is over, but no, it is just beginning for many of you. Um, so for majority of you, like 108, I want to say, individuals were drafted over the weekend. Um, just mind blowing. Um, the, 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 I think eight hours, eight plus hours of draft content that was put out Saturday and Sunday night. Um, just an amazing amount of time, amazing amount of energy, amazing amount of talent joined the league. Um, I had mentioned in, in a, um, in a tweet the other day that the pros just increased their size by 16.7% with the influx of 108 new players coming to the league. Um, which is just, I mean, that's, that's a lot of, of new players for every, almost every five players. One of them is new, um, uh, which is just pretty crazy. So, um, I, this is our final, final episode, but I'm here with some friends. I'm here with, uh, Johnny Reno. Johnny, how are you tonight? Hey, I'm good. Axel. Sorry. No worries. Glad no to worries. be here for the last show and I'm excited to hear everybody's experiences so far. Absolutely. And Robert Cherry, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Doing well, doing well. It is it is a Wednesday night. And then we've got new Mickey Melillo. Mel 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 is that more? Is that right? Melillo? Close enough. Okay. Yeah, close, close enough. I'll take it. Okay. I was watching last night the AJ show and trying to like process it in my brain. Like, how do I get my tongue to say, <laughs> say it the right way? So I appreciate it. Feel free to correct me or or we'll have a separate like VC chat of, and I'll just have to like say it over and over and over again until it's perfect. Let's take my normal greeting that you guys have given me since the preseason. I'll just Mickey! take the Mickey. <laughs> Sadly, Daniel's not here. Basketball is not my friend. It's uh, He is off playing uh, a basketball league, uh, which is great. Next week, uh, it's on Thursday. So we could have had a show next week. Um on Wednesday, but uh, we're ending tonight. But anyways, I saw Johnny. That makes me uh, want to uh, share with you. We're all here in celebration. We're here. I've got some uh, Diet Coke and uh, coconut rum, Malibu Coke, um, myself. I've got some uh, other drinks. We're going to celebrate a little bit. Uh, it's the end of a end of an era, end of the season, uh, the SFLM uh, season five, water. Perfect. It's not vodka. It's just water. I'm staying hydrated. Um, but yeah, there's a lot uh, that happened. <laughs> a lot went on. And we're just here to celebrate, uh, you know, recollect uh, over what happened uh, and, you know, just just have a lot of fun. Um, so anyways, uh, so last show was on Thursday night and a lot has happened since then. So Friday night, the very next day was the big championship game between uh, the Adams and the Cavalry, uh, the Adams ending up uh, being the victors in that one. Um, but Mickey, wondering if you'd be one, willing to sort of share with us sort of how the game went, what was, what it was like. It sounded like you were in the a voice chat, the Adams voice chat with, with your fellow uh, uh, players. Yeah, during the entire uh, game, we decided – and we had a, such a great locker room that we didn't want to just go out just chatting with each other and being words on a screen. We decided to get into the voice chat for the final game. And it was, as you would expect, a bunch of rowdy guys. We were cheering. We were critiquing the whole game. Why did we do that? Coach, why did we fake punt it? We still don't know why we tried to fake punt it there. But, um but during the whole game, we were just having a great time. And then when that fourth quarter came around and Prelis just exploded and brought us back. I mean, we, Ethan said it great. We had three points at half and wound up winning by three at the end of game. And I do have to give Daniel credit with one thing. He pr not only predicted the Adams to win, he predicted the ending of the game. He said that. If it's going to be a close game, it's going to come down to a field goal, and that's what it did. Um, and ultimately, I, I remember watch, watching the game. It was 
it was a very entertaining game. And many people in the, in the comments were saying this is like the best, you know, not only best uh, game, but also the best championship game that the SFLM has seen yet uh, in its short five season history so far. Um, how does that make you feel? What, did you, I assume you enjoyed the game, but was it as uh, roller coastery as it was for the viewers for you? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, throughout the whole game, I mean, there was a, you know, we were down for the majority of the game. We went up for a little bit. I believe it was 19 to 16 at one point. And we were just cheering. And then all of a sudden they scored the touchdown. We went back down and we just, but we never got down on ourselves. We always stayed positive. We were like, we can do this. This is what we've done all year long. But yeah, even in the in our locker room voice chat, we even said this got to be one of the best games in minor league history. Yeah, it was it was it was one one for the record books, one for the one for the ages, um, and uh, so after that, so that was one big big night, and then uh, the very next day uh, was day one of the draft, uh, part of uh, the two day draft uh, that was going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, and. You know, for you, Mickey, uh, how was it uh, sort of jumping in and and what was the experience like in the green room and, and preparing for the draft and, and that kind of thing? Well, what's great about the green room that it was the first time I've actually got a chance to really see some of these players. Uh, Young Vot was there. My players, uh, Neil Rivers, Jason Peace, one of the first times I got a chance to see them face to face, so to speak. And... With that, we just, all of us were supportive, and we were all predicting everything, like who's going to go number one. Number two, obviously, we know who that wound up being. <laughs> yeah. and, and, but it was just, it was great, because we all jumped in there the half hour before, and we were all talking about how nervous we were, where we were going to go, where we think we were going to go, who knew where they were going to go. Nobody said anything, but we all pretty much had our suspicions, and... Yeah, it was it was a surreal experience. Like you know, growing up a, an athlete in middle school and high school, and actually getting to experience a draft, like a real draft, not a fantasy football or anything like that, but where your name gets called and you see highlights of your your days in the previous season. It was just so very surreal for me. Yeah, i you know hearkening back to the time that I was in that same green room um, with others, similar experience with that. What you're just sharing. Um, and, uh, you know, that's not only was the minor league a spot where I was able to, you know, create some really long lasting friends, um, and connections, but also then, uh, just really getting involved with the larger league or the, the league, um, itself, um, uh, was really, uh, fun. Um, so Robert, you were on the GM side of of go of what was happening in in the draft um what tell me a little bit about what your experience was uh both in preparation for like the, the day of or or the week before um for you um at uh charleston and then what was it like for you guys as the draft was continuing so all the way up to the draft even during the draft we were contacting players just uh getting into their headspace seeing uh, how they are per personal wise, uh, personality wise, and uh, during the draft it was hectic. Where we had a list of people we wanted to get or possibly get, and luckily the people we wanted fall in, fell into our spots, and we were able to draft them. It was really cool. That's to good. See the process. And, you know, it is such a dynamic experience and you're just like, okay, uh, there are a couple times for, for Minnesota as we were going through that we're like, uh, we have this, you know, our top player that we want to pick next, but we were like five or six or 10 p picks away. And then like, oh, oh, they don't need that p position. So, oh, now we're worried about Houston or, or uh, Los Angeles or something. And then like, oh, b bam, dang it. They took the guy. And like, okay, now we have to shift and move and, and who, who was our second choice and, and reach out. Um, but uh, for us, and that, I don't know if it, what it was like for you guys, but I know for us, we, we call the person like maybe one or two picks beforehand, just to be like, Hey, you know, are you, are you ready? Um, we're going to be calling your name. If, if you, are you up for it? And, and uh, for me, that was really exciting to hear the excitement on the other end of the line um, as well. So. Yeah, we did the same thing. Uh, 
uh, our second pick, uh, Ace Singletary, he was actually reaching out to us like, hey, I'm <laughs> going to be coming up, right? You're going to get me, right? You're going to get me. And I'm like, yeah, we're getting you. Don't worry about it. We got you. Awesome. I mean, it, it's so exciting to see. And then, um, like, uh, Mickey, you can, you can uh, uh, account for this, but like within a snap, all of a sudden, boom, you're in, in the Minnesota locker room or the, the Charleston locker room. You're like, you know, hey, hey welcome in, Mickey. How are you doing? Uh, you know, hey, Ace, how are you? How, welcome to, to Charleston, that kind of thing. Um, you know, that tried to make a good first impression as, as a team and, and things. Uh, Mickey, what was it like for you when you're like all of a sudden like the the, the switch was flipped on the backside and you were, you know, allowed in to to the neck the other side, I guess you could say. Like I said on uh, AJ's show last night, it was almost instantaneous. So I'm sitting there, and it was that was one of my biggest worries. It was me not really getting a chance to say goodbye to the Adams, and it's one of the main reasons why I made those signs when I got drafted. So I could tell them. I'm going to miss them. You guys were great. You were, you were a family, but it, it was instantaneous. And then hopping into the Minnesota locker room, I guess because of my relationship with you and Johnny, Derek and Dan, and just getting to know BJ and Jason with our, with my phone call, it just felt seamless. Like I just, the comfort level was there. And then meeting Angela for the first time in the voice chat as well. It just, it just felt right. It really did. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that that same feeling I, like ripples out, you know, and is the same type of feeling that, that all these other play, rookies, all these, yeah, now rookies, officially rookies, you are, you are first, first season in, in that the, the pros um, felt uh, on Saturday and Sunday uh, for them as well. Johnny, you were sort of Johnny on the spot with, with these graphics and there's a, you know, Yes, there's a, a team of people picking these these players, but all these the the social media and the graphics and all these things that go into uh, promoting these these new players and and making a, a welcome home for them and to sort of get that that big sort of uh, 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 what is it um, all eyes on me kind of feeling. Uh, that that comes with you know the the tweets that go out to the to the the SFL and league and it gets posted in team team or player content and and that kind of thing. What was the experience like for you? Uh, both you know in preparation for some of that as well as doing that kind of stuff during the the draft. And and what how did it feel for you doing some of that? Yeah. So you know it, in the moment when you're working on it, it can get a little hectic because the draft itself is is hectic, but. <laughs> You know, I enjoy doing it, and, and the biggest part is, like you mentioned, to to um, acknowledge the players. You know, this is their time to shine. They got called. Um, we want them to enjoy the moment. Um, so that's really what it's all about. Um, and, you know, and hopefully some of these newcomers in the league, they get that drive as well. Because, um, you know, Mickey, you just got drafted, but just like that, you're going to be with us next season involved in the next draft. And, and we all want the new guys to feel welcome. Um and it doesn't have to be Minnesota. It could be any team, but um, you know, again, it's, it's their moment to shine. That's, that's why we do it. That's why I do it. Um, so I enjoy it. And I hope that, you know, everybody else enjoyed it on, on the other side of it. Definitely. And I know uh, having been, gone through it last uh, season myself as a, uh, you know, doing social media and, and uh, the communication stuff uh, it is such for an owner, for GMs, for, for the, the team leadership and things, having someone, you know, managing that and, and feeling like total trust in, in, in you and Derek and doing that, like there's, it's just a, an amazing feeling. So I appreciate what the, what you do. And for those um, that do it for their own teams, you know, there's uh, there's an unspoken huge thank you and relief that that comes with the work that you all do. So I um, just want to, you know, thank you for, for that. Uh, yeah, totally. Of course. Like I say, I, I enjoy doing it and then, um, you know, I, I would expect that on the other end if I was a player, you know, to feel that acknowledgement. So, yeah, it's I just I love doing it and and hopefully they do as well. Awesome. Keep it up. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, so we've got Matthias Citrion over in the um, the general chat. How about we hop over there and we'll chat with him a little bit. And if those that are that are listening or watching watching um, want to join in, give your sort of live chat live take uh 
uh, feel free to join or come over to the Discord, see the, the general um, voice chat over there, um, and join us. Uh, we're having a little, we're going to be doing some toasting and, and celebrating the, the sort of the big finale of, of the minor league season and um, the, the draft that just happened. And we are at the cusp. We're, I think, two weeks, I think it is, uh, less than two weeks away from um, the big kickoff of, of week one. So, all right. Let's hold on. Here we go. I'm going to move over. All right. Join voice. Oops. Everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? I was going to say, can you hear me? I can. Yes, I can. Okay. I wasn't sure how, uh, how this was working out. But here we are. It's actually awesome. kind of unbelievable that I was drafted in the first place. Not going to lie. Even though everyone's saying that I'm actually a really <laughs> good player. Just sort of... <clears throat> It was sort of like, funny enough, um, uh, just earlier this month, I, gra I actually managed to graduate high school. And Congrats. the motto for that and the motto for this is very similar of, this is it, man. This is it. Yeah, this is, you know, the, 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 it's the, the ending of one thing and the opening up the the, the, the next thing uh, for, the, for, you know, a whole new, a whole new adventure, right? Yeah. That's how I, just, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, so you were drafted, if I remember right, to Seattle. Is that right? Seattle, third round, 91st pick. Awesome. Cool. Um, I love that you you remember exactly what that is. So that's awesome. What was your your draft experience like? Uh, so that sounds like it was it was obviously second the second day, um, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was the second day. Okay. Uh, so what was it like? You Were you there the first day? What was it like? What was it like the second day as things were getting closer and closer? Uh, first day was a interesting day. Of course, I was one of the nine people left in the green room by the end of the day. <laughs> and it was still a nice little experience, everyone talking to each other. But it was, if anything, it was silent. Most of us were like silent in anticipation for when was our name going to be called. And there was uh, one of them who, funny enough, was one of the first ones pick the second day, Caleb, Caleb Richards, oh, yep. kicker. He was up to 5 a.m. his time watching the draft, waiting for his name to be called, which wasn't until literally the second day. Wow. The second day. I happened to be in the middle of nowhere and burned almost all of the data I have on my cell plan <laughs> just to watch the draft to see if my name got called. And one of the funnier moments is I see this all the time in the NFL draft. And it was the greatest that happened to me where you got the people up there talking. Oh, uh, there's this guy still open his name. And he's a really good player. And I think this team's going to pick him. And they pick someone, same position, different person. <laughs> In this case, when John Fowler was drafted, though he, he deserves the spot the same as I. But it's funny of how they're talking about me, and then he gets picked. It is, like, like we've always talked about, it is such a dynamic. There's a lot of options, a lot of thinking that goes into it. And, you know, some teams have different preferences and, and you know, what they like in a build and and things. And, and I'm... You know, it, it's dynamic, and uh, that it's a fun time. I'm I'm really glad that you were able to, you know, you stuck it out. You were there, and and were able to uh, find your way to Seattle. What has it been like uh, since then? Uh, the transition into the locker room, and you know, getting your contract, and and that kind of thing. What has it been like for you? Well, for me personally, it was relatively easy. Not gonna lie. It, it was a simple hi to the locker room, sign a contract, talk about what we have today was uh, who haven't we signed yet and uh, basically attack them as much as possible to get them to sign the contract to make sure they're here this season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Um, that's that's great. Uh, we also have with us Young Vought. Young, are you there?
Can yeah. y'all hear me? I can, yeah. Great to have you joining us. Thanks for coming. Hey, how are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Tell us, what was your uh, draft experience like um, for you during, uh, was it, were you drafted during day one or day two? Yeah, I went to uh, 17 picks. Okay. Very yeah, cool. it, it was, it was, it was, it was a cool, nice, wonderful experience. Very cool. What has it been like uh, joining your locker room? Uh, it's, it's been dope. You know, it's, you know me, you know me coming from that. I've been on the locker room. Oh, it's a really nice change over. Cool. Well, good. I'm glad that you were able to find a spot. I think it was in Louis, uh, Louisiana, the Revolution. Is that right? No, I went to Jackson. Jacksonville Kings. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You think about Red Joe. Okay. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, well, that, if anybody's watch, else watching, you want to jump in, that's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm ready for a shot. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'll. Uh, I'm always ready for a shot. All right. Oh, you got yours already, Johnny. So Johnny was worked, uh, did a lot of help uh, helping out with Tacoma. Um, I was over on Madison. Mickey obviously was a player in uh, the Adams, um, and uh, Robert, you were with Charleston. <laughs> uh, so, but great season, everybody. I, all players, all coaches, all everyone involved. Um, Swole in the in the chat. Here's to you. Uh, all the work that you've done uh, to build up this thing, um, and for you uh, with your your team itself, uh, the the Adams. And uh, you know, here's to to all of you getting drafted. Here's to a great uh, next season. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. Cheers. Ooh. Oh, a nice Thank honey aftertaste. Aftertaste. <laughs> I haven't taken a shot for a while. Um, so, do you guys have any questions? Do you guys have anything you want to talk about? My big thing is, like, just what the first year is going to be like for me. You know, being part of the Adams and all of us mainly being first-year players with the exception of probably Trellis. And then coming into the Adams with everybody with one, two, three years however many years in the pros it's just it's a little intimidating to me so as a rookie i'm calling out to some of my teammates here and my one of my owners and going you know what do i expect for my first year in the pros ah so are you asking us to answer that or is it just a question you're curious about or? i'm i'm asking you guys to answer it for me since you guys are legends with me for <laughs> for the rest of the uh for the rest of the rookies to see what it was like for your rookie year on your first pro team oh i see and, and you know what what they should expect sure um so for me i i was lucky enough to uh come into uh the sioux falls sparrows and i was their starting offense i'm sorry uh, starting outside linebacker um and so i uh, with a very defensive minded uh, AJ uh, Levy was uh, so I had a pretty good year uh, although over 100 tackles I think it was 111 tackles just outside linebacker for the year um, so a little under um, 12 so 12 games what uh, like nine tackles a game is pretty it's decent as a uh, rookie coming in at like 65 value bronze um, and you know I it wasn't my home. You know, I, I was excited to go there because they were my local team and um, I didn't know that much about them. And then uh, again, it, nothing against them, but just it wasn't the right spot for me. So after that, I found I went to another team uh, in free agency. I went to the San Diego uh, Mavericks to uh, see what what that was like. I, you know, I knew uh, a person, Leon Thunderman and a couple other people, uh, Stefan Forge were there for, for me. Uh, so there are people that I was familiar with. So I felt like, okay, almost again, sec a second try at, at finding a home. And it was great. There was, you know, I, 
it was a lot more active, a lot more talkative, and I had uh, more connection with these these players than I did uh, at my other team previous to that. Um, and I I would still be there if I wasn't if I didn't get the expansion team. Um, but you know I we I did, and so now it's like my time to start to you know between my myself and BJ start to craft the the culture and pull together the the team that we want to sort of build into that. So that's sort of my you know. Uh, so when I moved to San Diego, I took a step back and was then the the uh, outside linebacker number two. Um, I was able to get a eighty, like my stats were like eighty tackles uh, at that position. Um, not quite as good because I wasn't out there as often um, on the field. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's finding the right spot for you. And and if that's you know you know as much as we love you at the legend, if by chance again, I'm not saying you know, but I for me any any player, you should be uh, finding the right spot for you. Um, the and but I also not the grass isn't always greener on the other side. But finding the people that you make you have connections with and and. Uh, feels like home and friendships and, and things. And I think wh- one reason why, you know, Mickey, we have we were uh, seeking to, to draft you, you know, is because we do have that connection. We were, you know, bringing in people, you know, that, that can, that fit well with the, the type of people that we're surrounding ourselves with at the team. Um, but really it's, it's have fun. You know, that's really one of the big keys. <laughs> I don't know if the, the drink is starting to get to me. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking a lot, but um uh, you know have fun that's that's the big thing uh try to try stick it you know if if things are not going as well stick it out try to change thing things you know uh try to find solutions to any issues or problems communicate 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 um and have questions reach out you know whether that's to people in your team or expand it out to people in your network or friends that you have at other teams or or in the in the league um yeah, but ultimately, again, it's it's all about this is a hobby. This is supposed to be fun, and if it isn't fun for you, find out why. What's what's going on, and how do you change that? So, sounds yeah. good. What about you, Johnny? Last year, you went first round pick two, and you were on a team. How was your first year as a pro? So I I thoroughly enjoyed my first year. Um, you know, prior to that, I spent three seasons in the minor leagues with the Tacoma Grizzlies, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I saw players come and go as they got drafted, and I seemed to always, you know, I, I was still there. But I tried to be that um, constant within that locker room. Um, so even when new players came in, you know, once it came to my second or third season, um, I realized, you know, hey, I, I'm actually the leader at this point. You know, what, what can I do to help these players out? Um, you know, show them different things within the league. Because as a brand new player coming in, you don't the progressions are are you know they're they're hard to comprehend. Um, you know, various things. So um, that was when I kind of took on that role. Um, I was fortunate enough in um, you know two drafts ago to get picked up by the Fort Worth Toros, which um, was a, a great experience as well. Um, I did go first round, second pick, um, just like yourself. So. Um, there's a lot to every pick counts, but when you're a first round pick, I, I felt like, okay, you know, I, I should be a leader in the locker room. But um, with all that being said, your first season in the pros, um, I do feel like you should kind of figure out um, where you are and what you want to do within the league. Um, last season with the Toros, you know, they allowed me to actually um, help out with um, – some graphics and whatnot. And I became interested in scouting, which I did for Tacoma this season. So they also allowed me to kind of come into their coaches room and see what was going on behind the scenes. Um, But that was something I wanted to do. Um, But they allowed me that first season to kind of figure out what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do in the league. Cause for me personally, I wanted to be more than just a player. Um, And I hope that for a lot of players, if you want to be a player that that's just fine. I just do for me, I wanted to do a little bit more. Um, uh, but the first season was great. Um, no complaints in Fort Worth. Um, it just came down to a decision for me to, you know, transition and move on. Um, like Axel said, relationships are everything. You have friends in the league. Um, play where you feel comfortable or where you think you would be happy. 
or uh, but but that's what we, you know we're all here we pay to play in a league and you want to be where you feel the most comfortable and where you think you um, fit in better so I did make the transition to Minnesota um, currently as the uh, assistant um, director of communication so even now in my role like I've grown last season with the graphic side of things and um, it's one of those things that as you do it over time you get better at it so um, you know it's what you can give to the league so um, again, I enjoyed my first season. Um, it, I just, my suggestion would be to kind of take that time and figure out where you want to be or what you want to do. Um, where do you fit in? Um, but take it all in, listen to your owners, listen to your coaches. Cause every, every GM coach and owner in this league has great advice. So, um, listen to them and, and you'll start realizing, you know, what, what you can do to help. So. Yeah, sounds good. Like I said, I, you know, I feel, I already feel comfortable in a Minnesota locker room myself, and a lot of it has to do with the relate relationship I had with you and Axel and Dan and Derek and everything beforehand and with this show, actually. So, Robert, as a GM, any advice to any rookies out there who are in the locker room for the first time and what they can do to make it that family, make make it comfortable for them? Well... In all honesty, just be active. Talk to everyone. Uh, anybody that comes through the locker room, greet them, talk to them, get to know them. And that makes the transition a lot more smoother. It makes uh, staff feel more comfortable with you, knowing that you're active, that you're going to be there. And it's it's like having a, a family. It's um, From my experience, it's like having a family. Like every game day, we would pile into the locker room to watch the games and and goof off and joke and and enjoy the game and if that's something you like all for it go for it if it if you just want to watch the game quietly no one around that's okay too but i think most important is to at least pop in once in a while in the locker room and say hi and greet people and and uh you know get to know them a little bit let let them know uh get to know you a little bit all right Thank you. And Axel, thank you for allowing the rookie to take over your show for a moment. <laughs> I, just, I just thought it'd be great advice for the rookies to hear about, you know, what your experience was like and Robert as a GM and just so they know what it's going to be like moving up into the pros. Mm -hmm. In fact, Robert was is was a, a rookie last season. I'm curious I'm, to hear what your thought was, uh, what your season was like. And, you know, similar to what Johnny was sharing, you know, him wanting to step into something more. You've now stepped into assistant GMing and things, you know, after one season um, at your team. Curious if you want to explore or explain a little bit more. Yeah, so I was drafted first round last year. I believe it was 16th pick with Charleston. A lot and of first I rounders here. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been with uh, Charleston uh, the whole year. Uh, I, I pretty much told staff this is what I want to do. I want to be able to sack the quarterback as much as possible. I play. Uh, I moved from defensive end to defensive tackle, and I told them my goal is to get at least a sack a game. I didn't reach that goal, but I was the leading rookie rusher in sacks, which I'm very proud of, and I look to, to go beyond that uh, this year. And... Uh, through my commitment and talking with staff, I was able to get assistant GM position. And it was a great experience, uh, this first draft. And I look forward to many, many drafts with them. And it gets me excited. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, that's the thing is like, if you're hungry for something more, don't don't be afraid to share that. Um, and and try things out. Like try, you know, you don't have to fully commit. Most teams are like, yeah, I'll, I'll either help train you or help give you some information and try to give back to the team and, you know, test your, test the waters a little bit here or there or ask, what is this? What is this all about? Could I shadow you? Could you show me a little bit? Uh, most teams are going to be willing and like, Hey, I like the person because you have a passion and you're willing to like, Hey, you're wanting to give me some of your time. We'll take it. <laughs> you know, most teams are, are willing to do that. So um, don't be afraid to to share those those aspirations. So, um, we've got another um, uh, another uh, rookie joining us over here in the the general chat. Skinny, you were able to join us. Thanks for coming. Can you hear me? Thank you, man. We can. can. We can. Yep. I'm curious. So, uh, yeah, 
we, the, we, there was the, the two day draft Saturday and Sunday. What was that experience like for you? Well, honestly, I didn't expect to get drafted. And, and to be honest, I was cool with not being drafted mm-hmm. because I came in so late that I didn't really get the experience of minors. Mm-hmm. And I didn't mind going back into the minors and getting that full experience. So, but um, one of my coaches, uh, Evan Lacey, he was like, um, I need to just put that filler out there regardless. <laughs> yep. And, and me and him was talking about that uh, for quite some time. So I took his advice and I put that filler in. I even think I messaged you at one point. Um, but I put that filler in and I surprisingly got drafted when, when Tulsa, they wrote me, <laughs> they was like, it was like two picks before them and they wrote me. And I told my wife, I was like, man, I don't know why they white writing me. <laughs> I know something, something ain't right. Right. <laughs> and then when it came to their pick, they wrote me and they was like, we take it. I was like, okay, it's clearly a prank. Like, <laughs> good joke. like what are y'all doing? Like, and then it was legit. So, and I think it was strictly off my personality. So, um, cause there was a lot of better players than me on the board for mm-hmm. sure. And I think strictly my personality got me the nod. Mm-hmm. I mean, all that progression is, is, is time spent in the league and, and being able to like invest in somebody who has, like you were saying, that personality that, that fits the locker room or the culture you're building Right. You know, then it's just a matter of, you know, time, like giving you, you know, getting you in the, getting your butt in the seat. Right. Uh, getting you to sign, sign on the dotted line. And, and then you're in the locker room and, you know, conversing and having fun with the, the players. And then every week you get better and better through the season and, and you'll be able to be out there making some big plays. Um, what has it been like since joining the, the locker room over there at Tulsa? Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I think I fit right in. I mean, I can't speak for them, but you know, <laughs> I'm I'm probably one of the most uh, wild ones in there already. So, I, I mean, I think I fit right in. So, That's good. I mean, I don't know. It's it was cool. <laughs> I was all like, I didn't have no problem with either chat. I was in, I was in the big league chat at the food when I knew better than <laughs> I was. In, <laughs> like my first game in the minors, I was up there. So I never really felt intimidated about that. So it's, it was comfortable. That's good. So nothing really changed. That's good to hear. And and even as a, like you were saying, as a, a minor league player and even a fresh minor league player being comfortable to go into the gen chat and, you know, I, it's not as scary as people make it out to be, but you know, when you, when you first join, you see some of the, you know, there are, there are people that have a lot of history there and they do have inside jokes and things. So sometimes it does from the outside perspective could be, you know, seeing as like, I don't know how to break into this. I don't want to interrupt or feel like, I don't want to be ashamed of saying something weird. Um, but really, I, I appreciate that. Like, you know, it, it took some, some, you know, gumption to, to get in there. But I, I think that that paid off for you. Yeah. All right. I'll <laughs> links up. There you go. <laughs> links up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Uh, anybody have Mickey? Do you have any questions? Any other questions? You're you're good at that. You're asking questions. Oh, you're on mute. If you're, I actually have a question. Oh, sure. It's an interesting question regarding the draft. But was there a player you were surprised wasn't drafted that you were surprised weren't drafted sooner? I think, In your opinion. yeah, I mean, personally, I think uh, Matthew Alvarado sh- could have, should have been, uh, I think all day long, he's first round material. Um, I think the reason that he went as late as he did um, was ultimately uh, not many, it was a position. Like, I don't think that many uh, uh, linebackers were needed right away. Um, and so that it might have been due to that. And then uh, I'm not sure why some other teams selected the linebackers that they did. Again, it could be value wise or, you know, like you like Skinny was saying, you know, personality just didn't really fit exactly. But um, 
knowing who he is, um, I'm surprised that he went as late as he did, personally. Any other? Robert or Johnny or Mickey or anybody? I think Viper was... Is that was the biggest slide I've ever seen in my life. You think so? Well, that's true. I don't know. I'm biased because he was on my team, but <laughs> I just felt like that was a huge slide, and it just kept sliding. I was like, what yeah. is going on? No, that that is a very good point. Like, pretty drastically, like, very, very, very late in the draft. Um, was he? I think he was the very last wide receiver, perhaps, um, out there on the board. Um yeah, I agree. Once you mention it, that that is surprising. He did have a for having a really big, uh, pretty good year uh, or good season. Um, yeah, that is a surprise. Uh, speaking of wide receivers, when we were all in the uh, rookie room the first day, uh, we were all surprised on how the T the Queen got to thirtieth. Yeah, that's and that good point there too. She was a late second. And, you know, yeah. again, it, it very well might have been, again, not all I'll GMs, not all here. not all owners are able to talk to every single person or they find the right fit for their 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 team. Like, and as great as she is, maybe they, she wasn't the right fit for, for the team. Um, and that where they found somebody else that had, that was, that fit better. Can't answer that. But, but yeah, it's, it is surprising that, you know, that's the thing too with, the comparing, you know, the SFL draft to the NFL draft, it's not who's who's the best and you just take them no matter what position you need or whatever, because then you can trade and move things around and and you know, or find a spot for them or things like that, where it's so much so much different here in, in the SFL. Um, and you're pretty much uh forced to uh draft around you know what's available as well as what your needs are, and uh, you know, as much like for us at Minnesota, we loved, we had a really great uh, conversation with, with Neil Rivers. We just didn't have a spot for him. Um, But we totally would have drafted him, you know, first round, you know, type of material, like for, for, with our second pick or something. Um, But we, we have four defensive linemen, so we couldn't do that. We talked to him about moving to O-line. He wasn't into it. And we're like, we don't want to force you, you know, so it is what it is. And, you know, that with, with us talking a little bit about like the draft, you know, Sometimes, you know, we, the draft, that, that that is one reason that there is why one positive why there's uh, one season dr- uh, contracts so that when you, if you aren't really, I don't really want to be here. I was drafted here. As much as I have, I'm loyal to my team, it just isn't the right fit. I'll go try to find another spot. So it doesn't mean that, you know, hey, maybe uh, you'll swing back around in a season, two seasons, five seasons, 10 seasons. Um, from now but you know that's all the why it's important to just to simply reach out and make connections so we have our team has a really good connection with neil rivers and you know uh what's you know he's a great guy and and you know mickey you can attest to that we i saw him last night on aj's show again just sort of you know being him and and you know just uh you know finding people that that you you like you know what you're doing you have passion you're willing to put in extra energy uh that kind of thing so Long story short, <laughs> the draft is what it is, and then you know af- after this after the season starts, not many people will care about which which round you were picked, where you went to, and then it's a, you know as soon as the off season hits, everybody's sort of fair game again. So, my biggest surprise in the draft, and I know there was a very select openings for quarterback, was. Ty Patak or Ty Tech Ty. I'm sorry if I'm murdering your last name, but you know I understand where you come where you come from on that. Um, you know, good quarterback all year in the minors, and on top of it, being in the in the chats with him in the minor general chat, just a good guy overall. I was actually kind of shocked he wasn't picked up. I agreed. I I was expecting him to go as well. Um, as you know, as an option, he is, and I think even to his own credit, he, I think he even feels this way, um, that he's not quite hasn't progressed enough. Like he ha- isn't quite at that level um, of where he wants to be um, as a player. And, but I think he, w- I think the again, just like Skinny was saying, his personality is one that you could easily bring in and develop over time. 
uh, to being a really solid, you know, uh, franchise quarterback kind of thing. Um, so I, I agree. I think, I think that was uh, a, a surprise, you know, again, not to say those that were selected, but it's just, I, I, it also was a lack of quarterback spots out there, which is always seems to be the case every, every season. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. But all that is a, as a quarterback, there's absolutely nothing wrong. Like skinny had mentioned earlier, going back into the minors, there's, there's no shame in that. He has time to progress his build, uh, make his player known even more in the minors than he was. Again, I went through that. Like I, I totally get it. And I was actually more happy to end up being drafted um, with the build that I wanted and, and the reputation that I had built. So there's no doubt Ty will get Pat picked. It could be next draft, draft at whatever it is, but he will be somebody's franchise quarterback in mm-hmm. the near future. I hey, Johnny, you broke records too, right? Uh, one. <laughs> and I'm proud of that one, but uh, that's it. Uh, it was, you know, it was on the verge. Who was it? Um, Patak and um, Jordan Seif almost broke it this season, but um, I'll hold on to it as long as I can. <laughs> Well, we are, I, mean, I don't want to stretch this out if we don't have too much to say, but um, ultimately wanted to, you know, one final hurrah and and big celebration for, for those that, uh, there he is. Um, he had it under, until week seven, then he threw five picks. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, ultimately, uh, we wanted to celebrate, uh, give a big, you know, round of applause to the, everybody who put in work uh, at, for the show, for the, the minor league, for the players, for the... For the league, um, that kind of thing. So, woo! Good job, everyone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. If anybody else is drinking, I'm gonna have another little shot to celebrate. Um, and uh, we'll we'll start to call it a night in, in just a minute after after this. So, um, here's to you all. Uh, really appreciate you all. Love you all. Uh, great show. Thanks for being on. Um, before I drink, I'm gonna say. A shameless plug, if you're wanting to be part of the show, like how Mickey's being on part of the show, Mickey's almost done with that. Um, and like like Robert's part of the show, like Johnny became part of the show, um, like Derek and Daniel. Um, if you want to be part of this, we'd love to have you. If you want to, uh, John Fowler was would be here if he wasn't working right now. Um, if you want to be part of this, uh, we'll be starting up again uh, mid-September uh, um, in preparation for the kickoff of next uh, SFLM season. Um, we'll probably start doing like calls out and getting people together around mid mid to end of August in preparation for and planning for the show. If you want to be part of this, if you have a segments you want to be part of or or any part of this, we, we'd love to have you. Um, this is meant to be a show f- uh, for the minor league players, uh, by the minor league players, um, those that have just been drafted, you know, people that, that love the minor league. Um, this is exactly where you we want this to be a home for you, uh, to help bring up the next generation. So cheers to everybody. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Any, cheers. Yeah. All right. Well, with that then, um, any final words, uh, Johnny, anything you'd like to say to, to any of the minor league players out there watching? Well, I, I do want to say that this episode was for, for you guys and gals this episode was for the minor league players um you know you endured an entire season wins or losses it was fun you built relationships um some of you got drafted most of you got drafted um i personally want to say you know i I hope you enjoy your your time at the next step because it was it was enjoyable for me um and i hope that you guys feel the same thing um but even with that i do want to say axel um I said the same thing last season on this episode. I personally appreciate everything you've done for the league, even though I'm on the episode um, week in and week out, you do so much. You created the prospect bowl. Um, You know, you, you help gain interest within the minor leagues and you help so many players out. Um, You know, even this season for me, I've strived to be more like that. What, what can I do to help the minors, um, you know, on the field, off the field, whatever I can do to help, help gain knowledge that maybe I didn't know in their shoes. So um, again, um, congrats to everybody that was drafted and, and Axel, I once again, appreciate everything you do for the minor leagues. 
Happy to do it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Robert, any, anything you'd like to share to the, for the players listening? Well, first of all, uh, good luck in the next season coming up and just put in your progressions, get in contact with team owners and then office staff and talk to everyone, talk to anyone and you'll, you'll open some doors and you'll open some eyes and it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun watching you guys grow in your positions in the minors and hopefully I'd be able to draft you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> absolutely uh, that's the thing like the, the more you give it feels like the more you're receiving from others and and even if others aren't doing it stepping out there and sharing a little bit of yourself in your locker room or a little bit of yourself in gen chat or in uh, the sflm gen chat um you're gonna set a good example for those and you're gonna find the people that are willing to do that or find connections like i remember maybe it was like two or three weeks ago maybe it was a month ago even um, I think Jeff Spicoli like posted something about growing peppers. I have a garden. I'm growing peppers, and I made hot sauce last season or last last summer. And we we're talking and connecting on that. So it's whatever you do, just just don't be afraid to get out there a little bit. Put yourself out there. You're going to be able to reap the rewards uh, exponentially. So, uh, and Mickey, any final words from you? Well, to the miners, to everybody that was in the miners, great season this year. Um, To the rookies that got drafted, good luck. I look forward to seeing you on the field. To those who didn't get drafted, progress. Keep doing what your scouts are telling you, and I'll see you on the field next year. To Axel, BJ, and Jason, thank you for giving me the honor of the number two pick. Uh, Johnny, thanks for giving me – for being being that person that I could just, like, kind of, like, vent to while my stress was rising to when the draft was coming up. And then, last but not least, Axel and Dan still have to thank you. I know I did this on the when you guys interviewed me a few weeks ago, but still got to thank you for the fandom that you gave me from that <laughs> preseason game. If it wasn't for you, I don't think my experience would have been as great as it was. And just doing what you do, giving the miners a voice, giving a show for the miners to look at, and giving them a chance to truly be highlighted as much as you do, talking stats, talking about the plays, talking about your predictions i think it's great for the miners and then when they get to the pros to really experience what it's like so thank you thank dan meerkat if you look over my shoulder there's but uh bush light apple for you um but just thank all you guys for a great season for me personally cool well appreciate it yeah i mean this is all uh we know the value of what an experience can be and we want to have a transformative experience for everybody watching and the, and trying to trying to have the minor leagues be an ex, uh, a fun transformative experience leading into what the the pros already are so um we'll appreciate that and those that joined us tonight in the in the gen chat uh the the voice channel um any final words uh from uh matthias any final words from you Oh, I'm going to try to keep this simple. Have fun. Don't die. Keep progressing. Thank you, Axel, for having me on the show. Thanks all the scouts who scouted me out and all the nice little conversations we have. And and I repeat, don't die. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And Young Vot, any final words that you have tonight? Yeah. Uh, congratulations to everybody who got picked up this weekend. And a big shout out to you all for all you all did this season on with the minor league, uh, all the extra exposure that you all gave, and uh, good luck. Thank again, you once again. Good good luck out there. Uh, and Skinny Washington, anything from from you? Any final words? Uh I'm just going to say uh, the Central Division. I know y'all see me out here, and I know y'all going to try to game plan and pick on me. I'm going to tell you, don't do it. <laughs> Think about it. Don't do it. Nah, I'm coming I'm at you, man. I'm coming at you. <laughs> Johnny's going to throw it right at you. Listen, I want all the smoke. I want all the smoke. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, and for those uh, watching uh, later on, thanks for, for joining us for this great season. Those in the chat, thank you for always supporting us. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm Axel Raven. This has been Minor League Fights and Insights Season 2. I will be back to see you guys in about three months. Yeah, yeah, about three months. I'll give or take a, a week or two. Well, uh, exciting. 
And with that, we're out. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Axel. That was a good show.